Hello and welcome to the other brothers. What just happened there? I redlined it, so I started flipping the Hello and welcome to the Shadow Shadow Cast. It's an amazing new episode this week. Amazing, exclusive. That was Tommy's supposed to sound like a bomb today. going off. Yeah, well, that you... was supposed to be... sound like a bomb going off, but I think it sounds like I just farted into the mic. I think it just sounds like you lost your mind there for about two minutes. Explosion. <laughs> That sounded oh, like a depth mad. charge or explosion in water. Uh, anyway, uh, Abigail's here too. Say hello. 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 Yes, hello and welcome back to the Overshadow Shadowcast. I hope you guys enjoyed the um, <laughs> videos I put up on last week's episode with the uh, new screen title. And the old screen title. Yeah. A moment of silence. That's long enough, right? I thought you'd enjoy that, Tommy. Mm. I was a wee bit worried, like I said, about um, epileptics. But then yeah. I realized nobody watches anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> My chair is very <sighs> squeaky today, I'm afraid. So if you pick that up, I do apologize. We never pick that up. We never pick up the squeakiness I sometimes of your do. Chair. I sometimes and there's do. Always, there's always somebody in the background doing really loud construction that's never picked up either. Shall we talk about what we've been playing that's this week? That's what we should be called. We should rename the channel Imaginary Construction. <laughs> the noises that aren't there. They're never there. They've never been there. No matter where we've recorded. They've Sometimes never we hear rain. Been there. Sometimes we do hear the rain. That's not construction. Yeah, but that's a noise Unless that we comment flood. on. Yeah, but I'm talking about imaginary construction. It's never there. Oh, it's very tiring. Like, the only things that people must be building in the background are dreams and fairy tales. Right, we have been playing this week. We have been playing more Halo 2 anniversary custom matches. Custom games. Matches. Yeah, but you've got, you've got something to hear about Halo 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I misread which one I was supposed to do first. Mm. Yes, you did. Uh, so, like I said last week, I've been playing more of Halo 2 Anniversary. Now, the difference between Halo 2 and Halo 2 Anniversary is that you are able to switch between the classic graphics, or well, the classic game and the anniversary game, so like the remastered one. It's remastered, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that's what you can do. Now, I was having trouble taking out two hunters in the past one like in the, sorry in the in last week's episode it's interesting previously that, on it? overshadow shadow cast abigail was having <laughs> trouble <laughs> taking <laughs> abigail was having <laughs> trouble taking out two hunters oh yes you were um because you were running around with like a uh, it was like a carbine and a pair of sweaty socks you didn't really <laughs> a sword have i had a weapons. sword i had a sword but yeah i didn't i wasn't able to locate uh, a laser beam rifle sniper thing uh, beam, beam rifle yeah, is what you're looking beam for. Beam rifle. Right? They, they, there were no, there were none. Anyway, I like tra backtracked through a bit of the game and I couldn't find one. So eventually what I had to do after about 10 times of routinely trying different weapons was effectively switch it back to the classic graphic mode. And that was a lot easier to see where on the hunters you need to shoot at. Interesting. Yeah. That was the same in CE. Yeah. I had real trouble trying to... But also I noticed that in the classic graphics mo oh, game mode, they make a weird noise. Graphics. Graphics. They make a weird noise. The, hunters the graphics make, make a weird noise? No, the hunters make a weird noise. For goodness sakes. Oh, how? They, I don't know. They do that. Or something like that. <laughs> There's no way I have ever like, heard a hunter go. <laughs> Unless somebody filled it with helium. <laughs> And it's just slowly <laughs> releasing it like a fart. No, but they make a weird, like it's, nee, like that kind of noise. Nee. Well, they do make noise, yeah. But they don't make that noise in the anniversary, in the remastered. Or they do make a noise, but it's not as tinny. If memory serves, in Halo Combat Evolved, the the, you know how they, they basically just put the remaster layer on top of the old one? Okay. So in, in memory, that's why you can switch between the graphics. If memory serves, the the game yes. also comes with two audio files a remastered audio file and a classic it could be that you're swapping between the remastered file and the classic audio file as well between the two audio files Sorry. yeah um, and that's what's causing that well that does make sense mm -hmm. so anyway so i was so i eventually managed to get past those unfortunately i did lose two marines actually i lost three that Boo. was very unfortunate Boo. But I was able to progress through it pretty quickly after that. That was the toughest bit for me. Boo. Well, my Abigail. marine lasted very long. Abigail. Yes. 
Boo. Boo you too. Uh, actually, that's not bad. Legendary, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I'll yeah. take that. Do you know, I've never actually played Halo 2 and Legendary. Well, we need to do that then. We shall do that. Well, I need to do it. I need to play it by myself, otherwise there's no point. You've already done it on Legendary. You've got these kooky rules I need to keep adhering to. Yes, it's not because I am a cookie. I know you're a cookie. You're a cookie cookie. I'm a nut cookie. Because I'm nuts. Do you know what my favourite biscuit is? Genuinely, my favourite biscuit. A bold Gary. A ginger nut. <sighs> I don't I think love, you're allowed I to love, say that on YouTube. I can say I can say ginger nut. That's a type of biscuit. They are my favourite biscuit. They they work with everything. You can crumble them and put them on some like vanilla ice cream. That works really well. Can they're good dunkers for tea, or they're good as just a snack and you can eat it like a little squirrel. A ginger nut being dunked in tea seems pointless. No, it's actually really nice. Are you sure they're not like waterproof? I mean, they're solid. Yeah, but they're really... No, no, you can... That's what I'm saying. They're a good dunker. They don't disintegrate. No, that's my point, is that they can't be absorbing any of the liquid. They do cause... absorb They do absorb liquid, actually, but it's not a lot. Mm. So they are right. the perfect dunker. And also, okay. they give a different element mm. of the spiciness from the ginger when you bite it. Yes, yeah, so well, of course, that is a major part of the eating process. Yes. The ginger biting. Nuts. Ginger nuts are really good. I don't know if... I genuinely don't know if... That ginger I discuss... nuts are really good. <laughs> I don't know if I discovered that by myself or I was just inspired to start liking ginger nuts because uh, I think it was also Basil Brush's favourite biscuit. A cup of tea and a this ginger is, nut. This is, this is the name. This is the name. You see that ginger nuts are really good or I don't know if I was inspired by ginger nuts. No, I don't know if I was inspired by Basil Brush who also liked ginger nuts. I used to love that show. It got really weird after a while. There was a cat. Really... They had they had a ca- they brought in an American character who would just who, who wouldn't call her him Basil. She would go, hey, "It's Basil," and I'm like, "Oh my god, how many times are they?" And it's like every episode. And it's like we get the joke, we get it. Shut I, up. I I um. Well, I find it a wee bit funny that you're complaining about American accents, but I Me. really don't think that we're going to be allowed to use. <laughs> we have to clarify that ginger nut is a biscuit again. Because it's too many other possible things. We just, we, I don't know if we're being racist or overtly what are you sexual talking about? or whatever. We're talking about ginger nuts. So I really think we need to be completely clear that it's a type of biscuit. So I think possibly at this point we might want to put a picture of the biscuit <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> I will put up many biscuits of ginger nuts. Yes. Oh no. Because <laughs> we're going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> right. Um. <laughs> So after you you were distracted by ginger nuts. Um, Joe, it's really nice. How, how, Joe, it's really how, nice. Take a ginger nut. <laughs> you take a ginger nut. You put some vanilla ice cream or really any kind of ice cream, but it works better with vanilla ice cream. And then you put another ginger nut on top to make a ginger nut ice cream sandwich. And then you eat it like a little squirrel. <laughs> Can you stop eating all your food like a squirrel? No, that's the funnest way to eat it. It's like... So you took two bites. <laughs> that or a little done. rat. That's not a squirrel. That's not a squirrel. Squirrels don't take two bites of something the size of a ginger nut and then go, oh, that's no, me. No, it's done nibbling. And walk that's, off. That's, that's me nibbling. It's like. Yeah, but you stopped after two bites, but you'd eaten an entire ginger nut. <laughs> Can we stop talking about ginger nuts? It's making me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm asking myself questions I didn't think I'd ever have to ask myself. <laughs> okay, so what was I talking about? Halo. Yeah, I know, but what? <laughs> what what Halo was I talking about? I don't know. You wanted to be able to use different weapons, and I think that throwing massive ginger nuts at people is probably <laughs> one of them. Like a discus, like a frisbee. I had what oh, we were talking about your cookie rule. <laughs> we were talking about your cookie rules, and I called you a cookie cookie. Yeah, that and was that it. brought me onto biscuits. Yeah, you said, oh, yeah, I like to put gentle nuts on stuff. So like, anyway, you do, you freak. next up, we ha- I ha- was... You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, I was playing... At one point, um, I just started sneaking up behind enemies and just smacking, you know, smacking them on the head. I found that very fun. I'm, uh, it's the I'm easiest the way to kill them. What's that? Royal Society for the Prevention of Gingers. I'm not talking about gingers, I'm talking about characters of in the cruelty game. cruelty to gingers. Preven- prevention of cruelty to gingers. There are no gingers in this game. Yes, there are. We've gone on to a weird topic now. In Halo 2, I'm pretty sure there's a, a marine which is uh, which is ginger, but he has his helmet on all the time. But he is ginger. 
it was a thing, I think, that they made a ginger marine and then covered his head up. So anyway, um, so I was I was utilizing so you like the sneaking up behind yeah, people. And it's going, a lot easier, pinchy, pinchy. especially if you're about to be swarmed by loads of things. It's easier just to knock people on the head because that's pretty much one kill, and you're not letting anybody it's else know that kill. you're there. It's one kill, as opposed to all those other times when you shoot people and everybody else dies for some reason. <laughs> no, it's like a one strike kill and doesn't one make hit a, kill. one hit kill and doesn't make no noise. It doesn't make no noise. No. Minoise? No, no noise. What's no noise? Does it make Doesn't make no noise. It doesn't make no noise. It doesn't make no noise. It doesn't make noise. Right, thank you. It doesn't make no noise. Do what? The noise is like some sort of French knight. Oh my goodness, I my speech has been so bad for the last week. I keep mucking everything I say up. It's been so bad. You have been specking very badly. Yeah. You need to spec gooderer. I know. My brain's just been fried this week. I've been so busy. That's because you've been reading the Trump manifesto. I've not been reading the Trump manifesto. Yes, stop, 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 why you can't, stop lying. Why you can't no, seriously, don't properly. lie about stuff like that. People will think I have. I have not. I have not. I am not a supporter in any way, shape or form. Please, please that, do not but, take his joke seriously. But that's why I uh, take his joke seriously. Do I not. think you've accidentally defended him there. You try to say that he's just telling jokes. No, you. Oh, you. Oh, my jokes. Yeah, oh. don't take your jokes serious. Don't take Tommy's jokes seriously. I do not support whatsoever. Any of my jokes? What's no, wrong him. With my, you don't, Trump. I don't support Trump. Give it a press conference so you don't support my jokes. <laughs> so, anyway, we are also playing some Halo 2 custom matches or custom games, like I said. Hello. Hello. So, like I said, we were also playing some custom games for Halo 2 Anniversary, Hello. weren't we? <laughs> Lord, give me the strength and the will to continue with this. I need to eat some ginger nuts. <laughs> <laughs> On you go. So we were playing, like I said, we were playing... We were playing some custom games and it was a lot of fun. However, Tommy was really not pulling any punches at all. It was so difficult. At one point we were playing, what was it, up to 15? And I think I got one kill. No, it was up to 10. Uh, no, no, we played one up to, sorry, we played one up to 25 and I got yeah, nine. Yeah, one up to 25 and one up to 10. 10 and I got one, which is a lot different to when we played last week where it was 25-20 to you. Yeah, but as I said, I just... Um, was it a fluke you were playing that well, or...? No, no, I can play that well consistently, but I just... I can probably play a bit better, actually. That's um, scary. But uh, I just... I was just in a bad mood. And, you know, I had been in the house all day, working in the house, so I wasn't really that tired, whereas I think you had been studying. Like, yeah. In lectures and stuff, so you'd have been pretty tired, because lectures can be really draining. Well, it wasn't lectures, it was... Uh... It's a practical course. Well, I'm on a practical course, so but it was like a like a constant thing with me because I was running behind a little bit. So when people were taking breaks, I necessarily wasn't really taking a break. But it's also the adrenaline of meeting new people. You know what? It's, you, you know when you're in, in a new person. Yeah, but yeah. So I've also and I'm I'm also researching stuff as well. So it's there's a lot. There's a lot I'm doing. You're researching stuff for an assignment. Let's be clear. Yeah. You're not two days in and have been given, no. <laughs> be given a test subject. No. Do what you wish, but discover something. Yeah, magic. it's there's a, there's a lot going on at the moment, personally. So I, it's. I would say that we should explain what we actually did in the game types. Yeah, sorry, I I'm, I'm yeah I'm getting I'm getting dragged down. I apologize for that. You're getting very you you just you just got a lot to do at the minute. So what I'm saying is I'm trying to say that part of it would have been the fact that you were tired yeah. and I wasn't. I was really, really tired. And you, I think just, I think you were like hyped and you were just needed to get some energy out. So I think you were playing. Well, I think it was also the fact that there's, we're at the stage now where if I hold back at all, it's pointless. In snipers. That's why I'm saying we should talk about what we actually did because yeah. I think that's relevant. Do you want to talk about what we did for a while? Okay, so the so first one you've got one better memory than me. Uh, yes, the first one to 25 was just a snipers map, but a snipers match on a really small map. Yeah, what was it? It was it was really small, but I kept yeah. getting turned around. Yeah, because everything looked the same. It's basically just a circle with four quadrants that all look identical. Yeah. So it was very. The only thing that's different is there's a couple of pieces in places that are different color. 
Joke so it was very... Sorry. Yes? No, uh, no. You, you continue what you were going to say. I'll remember what it is I was going to say. Basically, I took an early lead because I was able to get a jump on you because you didn't really know what you were doing. Uh, and then you caught me up. You were only like one or two behind um, because you started to get better at quicker shots and, and melee attacking me. And, you know, you just you got more comfortable with what was happening. And then I got more comfortable with that. And it was 25-11 at the end. Yeah. Because I just went in a streak. Like, I killed you like seven times in a row. Just bam, 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 bam. Yeah, the, the um, killing spree logo came up on the... Well, the well the thing, this killing spree signage came up on screen saying Tommy's on a killing spree. Metal. Your, your gamer tag is on a killing spree. Ah, right. Okay, I remember, yeah. Yeah. I just... Yeah, again, it was just a case of, no, you do not get to live. Blam, 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 blam. But, uh, yeah, I just... I worked out what you were doing and did better. And then the second one was a game on the best map, which is called Zenith in this, but it was originally called Ascension and then it was called Pinnacle and Reach. And I turned off grenades, map pickups for uh, like power ups, camo and shield. Yeah, and that's my uh, my that's my go to when I panic. It's literally just lobbing grenades at you, like da, 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 da. yes, forgetting they very, don't stick to you. <laughs> yes, so basically, you throw grenades every single time we are physically close to each other, but you were only getting one grenade kill a game, and I thought, no, that's no, no. So I uh, I uh, I turned them off. I turned off uh, all the map weapons were snipers for ammo, and I um started us with two snipers that was it yeah and i forgot the melee attack were to sniper and i constantly forgot i didn't have grenades so i went to go mm-hmm. sh- throw a grenade and i was like oh yeah that's right i don't have any yeah because you're not choosing to throw grenades you're it's a reflex by throwing grenades exactly so we, we need to stop that because you need to choose to throw a grenade yeah and um, also but it was it was genuinely i would just like to say that it was amazing for watching your skill level because i hadn't been privy to that i've known you for four and a half years i've not seen that skill level before i didn't realize four four and a half four Four and a half yeah Yeah, four and a half yeah sorry i forgot about this year yeah i know i think a lot of people would like to forget about this year entirely Mm -hmm. but yeah so i'd never seen that level of skill before and i didn't realize just how much you'd actually been holding back but it was impressive to watch I think the one that sticks in my head was when you um like there's a lot of jumping sniper headshots sort of thing. But I think the one that sticks in my head is when you got the jump on me, you actually did manage to ambush me. Which when was that? Um, you were in that wee ramp tower thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and I came round the corner and I knew I, I thought you were up that tower, but you were able to get down to the bottom of the tower without me seeing you and then you jumped at me when I came round the corner, so you got the first melee attack in. Yeah. I think I remember but that. I would, yeah, but I was able to um, jump over your head and get behind you and hit you in the back. Yeah. Which normally I wouldn't do. Normally I'd just bash you in the face and then whoever wins, wins. But I decided to try actually getting around behind you, which is the go-to for melee attacks, get behind them. And I was able to kill you. I think there was a second time you were able to ambush me. Oh, I know what it was. It was the very first kill of the game. You came around a corner in the tower... Um, yeah. trying to sort of ambush me and I just snapshotted you in the face <laughs> like instantaneously you yeah. just you came around the corner and shouted surprise and I blew your head off I know that must probably have been my mistake was shouting surprise well no because there's a slight lag so I wouldn't have heard it till I was shooting you in the face yeah but you knew I was there and you tried to get the drop on me and you just appeared right in, in front of me and it should have worked pretty well but I immediately snapshot headshot. Yeah. And then just went about my business. I think and, one of the um, things yeah. that we... Because I remember when we started playing, you said... Um, what was it? You had just... I I had just killed you. That's what it was. I had gotten you. Uh, this was in one of the... It wasn't the last time we played. It was in one of the earlier ones. And you said... No, what was it? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I learned very early on, like when we first started playing the custom matches to move as soon as you got the kill like i was doing that anyway you didn't tell me i had to do that and i remember yeah, you relocating fight- after a successful shot yeah and i remember you saying that you telling me that was very impressive but when we were playing zenith you said that uh, i i was already on the move after getting the shot and then you i think went to go find me and you were like oh ho, ho, but i i know your pattern you always go this way whenever you and then he was like oh you've not done that 
you've gone the other way. <laughs> You're taking me by surprise. Yeah. So that's um, a good one. I also remember yeah. once where um, I somehow got teleported to a different part in Zenith. I was like, oh, I, I don't need to be here. I was so out in the open because I was in the middle of the whirly bit. And then you just went right past me, but you didn't see me. And I thought you'd seen me. So I backed off and I realized you hadn't seen me. So I just came up behind you just away, donk, on the head. Uh, I remember that. Um, I was looking for you and I, uh, I didn't think you would come up from there because you normally don't take that road. And I was right, you hadn't taken that road deliberately. It was a you had accidentally <laughs> wandered into it. <laughs> but it's a wee ramp that led you behind where I was standing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was fun. But I think it's it's very impressive how you're able to jump and take a shot at the same time. I can't do that. And also you seem to be able to see better than me in terms of noticing small movements, whereas I don't notice small movements all that much. I wait for a big movement. Like from ah, you, you're either... a T Rex. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. It's just getting used to it. You you know what the armor looks like when somebody moves when you've played. Yeah, what I was hundred thousand hours. What I was gonna say is it'd be interesting if we played that first map that we played. The wee one. Yeah, to see what it'd be like now. See if I could finally best you in that map. I've not. Have I ever beaten you at any point? No. Oh, that is my goal in life: is to beat you at the maps, to all the what? maps, to beat the... you at the maps, what? to beat you at the maps. Are you going to beat me to death in a library? <laughs> no, because you don't go into libraries. No, but it's the only place I can think of with a large enough collection of maps that you could beat me with them. I mean, in the game. The custom maps or custom games. What were they called again? Custom games. Custom, custom why games. Why are you beating me at the maps? <laughs> are meant, we drawing them? The are we reading them? What I are we doing I meant the here? custum games. I meant the custom games. Fine. That is my, go my goal is to beat you at some point. So what That's have fine. you been playing? Ah, oh, what have I been playing? I, just, I started a bit of FIFA 20. How's that? It's still bad. Um, all the game, all the FIFA games are technically bad. They're not very good at all. Okay. I mean, they sell lots and lots because there's a whole ego attached to it and people love football, so, you know, you, know, you get it. But there's a whole ego attached to I'm better at FIFA than you are sort of thing. I think that's part of the reason why. This is the first one I, I've had to play since FIFA 17. I, I also bought fifa 18 and 19 while they were on sale but that's so that i can play the journey on them i'm not really interested in the main campaign as it were uh, or the careers but it's it's just the uh, and before that i hadn't owned one since 2012 uh, fifa 12 sorry they're just not good games no they've always i thought like again it used to be that thing where i remember at school at secondary school everybody would play fifa it was like the game everybody would play. All the boys, would, like it was mainly boys that would play it. And now I don't ever hear anybody play it. Yeah, it's sort of like Call of Duty in that way. No, it's it's um, they're, they're just. And I remember FIFA '97. I think it was my uncle had it on the computer for some reason, and it had the inside football matches that were fantastic. But um, it was like was it five v five or three v three inside? So you could just boot the ball and it would bounce off the walls for about five minutes before it landed. It was brilliant. But um, like just like I know people have a lot of fun with them and that's fine. But technically speaking, the game's rubbish. Yeah, it's really bad. Technically speaking, the game is bad. Any other thoughts on the game where you kick the football around a pitch? Don't use derogatory words like that. Um, <laughs> It was... In a bouncy, bouncy ball into the white posts with racist. the net. Uh, uh, why is she there? Where people fall over if you look at them. Yes, uh, I don't like that <laughs> either. I don't like how defenders get to just dive all the Ruff, time as well. Ruff, in real he blinked football. at me. He blinked. He blinked. Somebody runs up to a defender to try and tackle them and they just go, oh, fell over. Free kick. Like, no, it's a dive. Only the same. But um, yeah. Um, no, it's, it's not very good. Like, I don't even... I really don't understand how the shooting works anymore. They seem to all they seem to have done is randomly change things to make it worse. Yeah, I just don't understand the appeal of the of the game at all. Because for something like that, I'd find it probably more fun if you were actually playing football outside, not on a computer screen. I, I just like to me that like the idea of playing a game that you play outside on a computer screen just doesn't seem that appealing to me. It, I agree, actual football's better, but I don't think I've played football in five years, so my, my legs would probably fall off. But yeah, you're basically right. Football's obviously way better, but the games, they're just not. No, 
very good. As I said, there's a whole ego thing about it and all this, blah, 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 blah. But they're just technically not very good. The passes don't go where they're supposed to. The shots don't go where they're supposed to. They've ruined the free kick and penalty taking system to the point where unless you've got 18 hands and are a child. They've made it for children, I think. <clears throat> because, like, when you're aiming, you, you don't yeah. use all... Sorry, I'm looking around for a controller. You don't use all of the joystick. Like, you know how you can push the joystick till it hits the edge? Yeah. You push it, like, a couple of millimetres and then you've already shot wide. Like, maybe it's my advanced years, but... <laughs> advanced years. That just doesn't make sense. No. It's just like, why am I only using a couple of millimetres instead of the whole, like, centimetre and a half? Yeah. Because that's just... Like, it's too finicky. It's too finicky. It just it takes all the joy out of it. It's a terrible system. Shall we move on to the stories? So they'll have ruined some... What? I was going to say, we, I thought you were going to finish there. So I said, shall we move on to the stories? No, I'm just going to say there's a new FIFA out. That was FIFA 20, I'm sure. And it was FIFA 21 is out now. And um, so I'm sure they've found some new way to ruin it. So you can all have fun with that. Yes. And you can also have fun with the new thing that we're going to discuss. Well, possibly. So, so we've we got on? one major story, but um, I think but, we should put that at the end. And we should yeah. talk about the other thing quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do, but you keep stalling, so... So, Amazon... Did you just say Amazon? Amazon. 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 Amazon is the latest business to jump onto the streaming bandwagon. With the likes of Google Stadia, we now have the Am- we now have Amazon Luna. There is a difference, though. Amazon Luna will not have a console. And according to Amazon's US website, you can game on your favorite screens luna is available on pc mac fire tv and web apps for iphone and ipad play screen to screen without missing a step in your game with luna controller so what exactly is amazon i i can't take that name seriously by the way amazon luna Luna. yeah i I just think of uh do you think what i think about i don't think so okay because i'm thinking of mooning people no i'm not thinking of that there's something similarly like this like the name luna reminds me of a feminine hygiene product <laughs> so that's all i can think about whenever i read this well like i so what exactly is amazon no, luna no 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 what stop do you not want that no i'm just i'm just we're, we're no that's i'm just i don't have one of those wee digital thingies that can make noises but if i could i'd press the button for the rest of the team getting up and walking out the room what do you mean just just stop them no I don't understand. Are, are you asking me to the cut that bit? The podcast is now done. No, oh, no, I'm not. Okay. I'm just saying the podcast is now done. Um, I'm retiring. Goodbye. So what exactly is Amazon Luna? Well, like I said, it's a cloud streaming service. A but, horror escape, according to you. But will work something more like Amazon Prime. By this, I mean you subscribe to channels. Like if you had Amazon Prime, you would need extra, you would need an extra subscription to watch Stars. At present, there are only two channels available, Luna Plus and Ubisoft. Luna Plus has an introductory subscription price of $5.99 a month, that's dollars. With this, you get unlimited use of gameplay, unlimited hours, sorry, of gameplay, up to 180p, 60 frames per second, stream on two devices at the same time, play on Mac, PC, Fire TV, and web apps for iPhone and iPad, and also brags that it has an ever-increasing library of games. There is no price for the Ubisoft one, just upcoming soon, and has some similar features. You can purchase a Luna controller to play across the platforms I have men- that I have mentioned. However, this is not necessary. According to Amazon's website, you can use a wide variety of other controllers, making the streaming service more available to those with a controller for an Xbox One, a DualShock 4, or even a simple mouse and keyboard. However, if you have so wished, to buy a Luna controller, it has an introductory offer of $49.99, and when it's at full price, it'll be $69.99. Oh, God. Yes? We have swish. a question. It doesn't mention swish. the Switch. It doesn't mention the no, Switch. No, you said Swish. When? So if wish. If you Swish. If you so wish. If you so wish. Or if okay. you so wish. Yeah, they, they wouldn't be able to use the Switch because the controller is mental for the Switch. The yeah. buttons are all weird. I have spoken a lot about the introductory prices, but there are two things you need to know you need to keep in mind if this is sounding like something you are keen on. One, you need to ask to be invited to the early access, then get an invitation to be able to access Amazon Luna. Two, you need to live somewhere across the mainland US, as that is the only part of the world 
this is going to be available. This will be why this is only being advertised on the Amazon US website because I went on to the UK one and you can't find it anywhere. However, we can assume that if all goes to plan and enough people jump on board, then they will make it available worldwide. Thoughts? Worldwide thoughts? No, your thoughts. I hate stuff like this because I'm not a casual gamer. I'm a, I'm a, and I don't mean any disrespect to casual gamers. If you just casually game in the background, it's something you enjoy, but you're not you know, into it as much as me, then you know, that's great. But I do not want to see gaming catered, uh, directed towards people like that. Yeah, I know. It's, I don't um... want gaming to be just for the hardcore gamers, don't get me wrong, but you can't forget them for the casual crowd. Um, so everything about like things like this just make me feel uncomfortable. But I've got no problem with it as long as the hardcore gaming stuff stays as well. I it's find, not for me though. I find it interesting that they're kind of working on something like because I know that some it's a bit like I was talking I was describing it a bit like Amazon Prime because if you pay for Amazon Prime, if there's extra channels like Stars is one that you have to pay extra for. But also what it kind of reminds me of is like a Now TV package where you pay for you can pick and choose what packages you want, you know, like movies or sport or things like this. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So it's interesting that they're trying to take it down more of a like television subscription type than an actual like, for example, like Xbox Game Pass. You just pay for that and then you've got everything. Speaking of... Do you, do you have anything else to say on the Amazon Luna? Uh, it sounds interesting. It's sort of another streaming service, but it's 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 directed towards casual gamers who just want to say, eh, click. I've got nothing to do. Let's see a game. Click. Put on F- uh, FIFA or whatever and then play. I've got no problem with that. I really don't have a problem with that at all. It keeps some of the good games running for longer um, because you keep the player base up. Uh, the people don't have to be spending hundreds on a console if they're not that into it. But you have to keep the console option available, the hardcore gaming option available. It's just not for me. That's why. No. If that was the only way to play games by streaming them, I might just stop. Because <laughs> it's just not. It's just not. Not for you. Yeah. So we shall now move on to the big story. The one that I think Speaking you... Speaking of gaming services and streaming and games as a service or a product or blah, 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 yeah. blah, stuff, things happening. What? Who? Ah. You got quite excited by this story, didn't you? Oh, not in a weird way. No, not in a weird way. I'm just saying. <gasps> oh, I got excited all right. Oh, you had, yeah. to, you had to take it down that road, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Right. So like I said, this is a pretty big story that happened the day after we recorded last week's episode. So we were kind of annoyed at the fact that even though it happened, even though we upload. So we, we record on a Sunday and we upload on a Wednesday. So this happened on the Monday and we were kind of annoyed. Immersion broken. Yeah. Well, Exclusive. We were, we were kind of annoyed by that. So last week we spoke about how Microsoft had no exclusives to go along with the release of the Xbox Series X. We talked about the fact that PlayStation 5 had all these really great exclusives. I'm trying to remember some of them off the top of my head. I can't. Tommy. Uh, it's like Marvel's... PlayStation it's, 5 exclusives. It's like um, Spider-Man. Yep. Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... See, the problem is... Demon's Soul. Because uh, PlayStation have done an awful lot of good work on uh, generating new IP for the PlayStation 5, there's quite a few exclusives already yeah. and they're not necessarily linked to previous playstation exclusive titles so or series so it's a bit difficult to remember actually yeah so so we spoke about it now microsoft had however struck a deal with ea to include ea play with their game pass subscription probably to try and tempt customers to buy their new console well microsoft has taken the temptation one step further and if you are into gaming you probably know the story before i even talk about it last week in a 7.5 billion dollar deal that's 5.85 million billion pounds microsoft bought zenimax media now if you're not her- if you've Who? not what Who? now if you've not heard of zenimax media it's the parent company of bethesda microsoft oh. in essence now owns bethesda microsoft have come out and promised makers of ma- makers of skyrim yes that's, a, that's a good enough example yes fall out all them things well, Zenimax are also involved in the making of a few other really. Yeah, I'm really just talking about Bethesda. Titles. Yeah, I'm just talking about Bethesda at the moment. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Microsoft have come out and promised that the back catalogue of much-loved Bethesda Git titles will be making their way to the Game Pass for console and for PC, and it seems that they are sticking true to their word. 
for it was announced a few days ago that one of the most well-known and loved games will be added to the Game Pass. Doom Eternal is set to join the gaming subscription service October 1st this year for console and later in 2020 for PC. Wait, just uh, just as a wee clarification here. I would say the next in the most well-known and loved game series. I'm not sure how loved Doom Eternal is. I've never it... heard a bad thing about it. Yeah. But I don't remember anybody saying it was amazing. I just uh, yeah, it's like 95%, 9 out of 10. It's a brilliant game. It's just it's nobody's like Doom Eternal will never be Kotor. Can I just say, right? I have heard people talk about Doom. I have heard people talk about FIFA. I have heard people talk about Call of Duty, Halo, all these games. You are literally the only person I have ever heard of that ever speaks as highly of Kotor. You're welcome. I have made everybody. Genuinely, I I never heard of any. But I never even heard that game before. Before you ever mentioned it to me, I'd heard of Halo, Call of Duty, all these things, but I'd never heard, never heard of Kotor before, or even the full title of Knights of the Old Republic before you spoke um, of it. You're welcome. Thank you. Carry on, my child. That is the, that. Oh. That is all I have to say. What What Probably. do you think? What do you think of them buying Zenimax? Right, we have to discuss why. Now, you've said that you think it's so that they can fix the subscriptions issue, uh, exclusives issue. No, I, I don't, don't necessarily agree. No, I'm saying I, I don't only think that. I think that possibly this is played into it to tempt more people in. I don't know if all this was already the, planned. All of the previous deals agreed by Zenimax will be honoured by Microsoft. What? All the previous deals will be honoured by Microsoft. I, what, what do, uh, did I just... I fell asleep for a second. Did we move on to something else? What? No. So it means that um, there's a couple of games coming out that will go to PlayStation. There's a yes. couple of games coming out yeah. that will go to PlayStation first. And I don't think there's anything that's completely exclusive, but there are some timed exclusives. Yeah, I know that. And uh, they, they that will be honoured. So yeah. Microsoft will release games on the PlayStation before the Xbox. Yeah, which is good. Speaking. Which is good. Yes, they're honouring their deals. Well done. I salute you, sir. Do you think this I is a good... I actually think... It does combat the exclusives. I think it's done mostly to promote the Game Pass. Yeah. And I think it's also done to, like I said, I think this is done in tandem with the Series S. I think those are the two moves which are for the casual gamer. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I said, brilliant, great. You've given the casual gamer their own console. And we, you know, the Xbox Series X is for the actual gamers. Uh, well, for the uh, hardcore gamers, sorry, is a bit a less insulting way to put it. And that's perfect. I don't think this is done to fix the exclusives problem. I think that's what I like uh, or Obsidian is for. Yeah. Because the fact that Microsoft basically owns PC in a weird way and Xbox means that they don't actually want exclusives. But I, I do think that, that's, that this is um, the move is to separate and target a large part of the gaming sphere that traditional consoles can't target. That's why the Series S is much weaker than the Series X. It's much less powerful. It's not for the hardcore gamer. It's for casual gamer until they've got their streaming service working properly. Yeah. And I think this move, I don't think this is the move that's to do with exclusives. No, I don't think it is. For me, Bethesda is too big as a company for them to not sell to the PlayStation uh, and eventually to some degree Nintendo purchasers. This is for the uh, game pass this is for the casual gamer game pass this is not f and for the hardcore gamer to buy the game pass this is not to fix their exclusives problem i very much doubt they would release uh the elder scrolls 6 or starfield on uh the console uh, on just the xbox even just the xbox and pc i think what they will do is they'll put them in the game pass and they might even look at a way of bringing the game pass to the playstation and nintendo but I don't think this is the exclusives. I think that's what other companies that they've purchased are for. I believe, if anything, this is not done to combat PlayStation's exclusives. I think this might be done to destroy exclusives as an idea. I think that they might be trying to target the idea of exclusives. Like, the Xbox doesn't do exclusive titles, but we have the Game Pass that gives you a whole, a whole host of them. Yeah. Whereas PlayStation do exclusive titles, or even just nobody does exclusives anymore. It's just, I don't see this as being their move in the exclusives war. I, be, I see this being as their attack on the idea of them having exclusives at all. I know, because I don't think Microsoft had many exclusives, because I don't even think Halo's no. an ex Halo is not an exclusive anymore. You can play it on other platforms. 
you can play it on the PC. Yeah. So it technically is not an Xbox exclusive, but it, it sort of is when it comes to fighting the PlayStation. And Nintendo, as brilliant as it is, is not really in that fight. That's a different thing. No, because Nintendo are kind of like their own, how to describe it, their own little club almost. Like their own little table where it's just Nintendo, it's nothing else. Because I don't yeah, think you, yeah, you, you yeah, can't yeah. you can't play you can't play Halo on the Nintendo Switch, for example. I don't believe. Mm, uh, there's a few games you can play. I think you can play Skyrim and stuff. But Skyrim came out in like 2012, 2013. It's let me have a quick look at that. Sorry. Yeah, it it's it's a different. It's a different thing. Yeah, it's a different ball game altogether kind of thing. I think that possibly this is because I was reading an article and they were saying that because Microsoft don't tend to really sell games at full price in a lot of ways because they've always got deals on somehow. Like even AAA games, I think you can sometimes find them on the Game Pass not long after they've been released. Yep. Is that true? Yeah. Whereas I believe for, for PlayStation's like on like subscription service, I think it's £60 for the year, mm. which is a lot of money compared to what I made previously. It was £40 or £30 for the Game Pass, but that was for a full year. But now they've changed it because it's, is it six months for £40? No, 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 you're confusing uh, gold with Game Pass. Yeah, sorry. Understandable. It's a wee bit difficult to keep your head around yeah. it. But the, the plan, this goes as well, by, as I'm saying, this goes as well with the, they're going to be folding the gold into the Game Pass. Yeah. So everybody will have gold for free. And uh, so, so they're sort of folding it into the Game Pass, but also not because nobody will pay for it. So if you don't have Game Pass, you won't pay for gold, I don't think. Or maybe you uh, there's no Game Pass variant in which you don't have Xbox Live Gold. So maybe there'll just be a Game Pass Ultimate or there'll be a Game Pass Xbox. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's they're folding it all together to try and stop it. I wouldn't be surprised if they did make it gold free because it stops people from, it stops you splitting this, the player base, which is never a good idea. So can I just ask a question? Mm-hmm. Bethesda's technically owned by Zenimax, because that's the parent company. Is that correct? Aye. Zenimax now owns is not owned by Microsoft. Aye. Does that mean that anything that Bethesda put out, Microsoft have to give the go-ahead to first? Uh, it depends on how they structure the company. I think what you're asking is, uh, can Microsoft stop them releasing games? Can they shut them down? Can they... S- yeah. yeah. Yes, they can. They because can do exactly what Disney did with Star Wars 1313. Yeah. They can shut it down. What I was um, what I was going to say was, could this mean that we won't get another Fallout seventy six? And by that I mean Fallout seventy six is actually already on the Game Pass. But what I mean, but what I mean is, will we get another utterly inadequate quality of game as seventy six if Microsoft are in charge? I don't think so. Okay. I don't. I think that if I, um, because they used to second, because yeah. Bethesda used to have a really really good reputation, didn't it? And then it just kind of went all to pots. Pot. Yes, pot. So I'm just what I'm doing is I'm just looking up uh, who produced Gears, right? Because if memory serves, Gears was originally made by Epic Games, but was then yeah. So the publisher for things like Halo Four, Halo has always been a Microsoft Studios game, right? But it went yeah. from Bungie to three four three. Yeah. Now uh, the uh, Gears games were they were published originally by. I'm just double checking to make sure I get this right, but it was Epic Studios. All right, I'm just double checking. Yeah, Epic Games published by Microsoft Game Studios, right? Yeah. So then Epic Games don't make it anymore. They do other things, which I think are horrible. But um, it's now been moved to the coalition. So basically the rights were already owned by Microsoft. So if you actually look at a lot of the original exclusives for Xbox, Gears, Halo, that sort of thing, they're actually very, very good. The, the issue is actually the developer changing, not the publisher do you see the difference? Yes. So Microsoft were always publishing those. So I don't really think there's a big problem there. It's the developer. I think Microsoft, if anything, might be able to pull them back and say, what are you doing? Well, that's good. That, no, that's just, that's nonsensical. Get back here. That seem, that to me is is the possible upside. Awesome. Yeah, because in my experience, Microsoft don't, they're not like EA which basically push companies to make rubbishy quick games with lots of in-serve, like, uh, buy this chest. You know, that sort of loot box mechanic rubbish. Yeah. They, they more let their company, they, they just seem to let them make the game. So they might do nothing, which wouldn't be great, or they might say, no, it can't be like that. Pick it up a bit. But from what I've seen, they haven't made anything worse. Okay. Like, I loved Gears 5, I loved Gears 2. They were made by different companies, but they were put, um, they were put together, sorry, they were published by Microsoft Game Studios. Yeah. And that's technically who will still publish them. 
It's just the developer will be owned by Microsoft as well. That's it. So I, I doubt very much that they would support another game as badly released as 76. That is good to hear. Yes. They might not stop it, but they wouldn't push that. No. If they did anything, they would push to make it better. So, yeah, it, it, yeah I'm quite happy. Do you have any other thoughts? Because I think that was all I had to say on it. Yeah, the, just to say what you were saying there about it, uh, the difference might be the fact that Obsidian and you know the, the, the makers of Wasteland and that sort of stuff, those sorts of games. I don't think Obsidian made Wasteland, but I think there's another company that did that was bought by uh, Microsoft. They already made good games. Whereas Bethesda at the minute aren't really like they're making great games with doom and stuff like that but the occasional game that comes out particularly the online ones which are actually released by zenimax limited as opposed to bethesda themselves or zenimax online i think it's called they're terrible yeah like they did an awful lot of work to make the elder scrolls online okay and i actually quite enjoy it but fall wastelands fallout 76 just awful and um there's been a few problems with bethesda like wolfenstein didn't work very well they're not very good like the, the Wolfenstein and Wolfenstein 2 and all that, but Wolfenstein Young Blood was apparently just a shameless cash grab. So recently Bethesda have started to slide a wee bit. I'm kind of hoping that Microsoft can come in and just say nope, but they might do nothing. That's the only thing that, that I would think about there. Um, when it comes down to the studios actually owned, um, we're talking Arc, uh, Zenimax also don't just own Bethesda. No, they own a bunch of other things as well. I know that, but Bethesda's kind of like the big one. Yep, the Arcane, who made Dishonored and Prey, those are quite good games. They weren't necessarily very well received, like, sales-wise, but they were very good games. Um, and Ed Software, now they make the Doom, uh, make Rage, they make Quake, that sort of thing. Yeah, so there's some really, really good studios in there that, that they now own. So that's quite good. I'm looking, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that they're supportive of those companies, because what they need for the game pass to work is games. Indeed. In fact, this this 7.5 billion purchasement uh, actually did cause a couple of people I know to change from PlayStation back to Xbox One Series oh, X. Oh, that's interesting. Xbox Series X. Ah, so um, I was wondering if that was if this was actually going to tip people over I, the edge. For I don't think it would convince. Wanted. I don't think it would convince a hardcore PlayStation player. No, but for but people who might, own both. Well, it might convince people who who were moving from Xbox One X to PlayStation Five to come back. Yeah, but so I was those saying people that... will probably eventually buy a PlayStation because you need to to get PlayStation's exclusives and they're always worth it. There will always be at least, what, 10, 15, 20 PlayStation games you have to play. So you might as well buy a PlayStation anyway. Yeah. I mean, so, it's... so to have to spend seven and a half billion, like Microsoft, let's be honest, they massively outpower Sony, who, who in turn massively outpowers Nintendo. I don't see Sony going anywhere because Nintendo have managed to carve themselves a part of the market. So why can't Sony do the same? Yeah. So no, I think having to spend seven and a half billion to buy that company is already like, that's what you had to do to have a fighting chance against PlayStation. And you probably will still lose. The only other thing, sorry, it might be the casual gamers who wouldn't normally buy a console, but would play a game on their phone or whatever, might, might now, or a cheap game on a PC, might now buy the Series S. Yeah. But as it's half the price... And some people believe that Xbox might on some level actually be making a loss from constructing it. I think people believe that even the Series X and the PlayStation 5 might make a loss because of COVID and all the rest of it. Yeah. It's possible that the Series S will make even more of one. But I mean, to, to even give Microsoft a chance with the Xbox against PlayStation, they've had to spend seven and a half billion. I mean, no, it no. shows you how well PlayStation will run in that roost. Imagine if they'd put seven and a half billion into the console development. Well, extra. But anyway, yeah. Um, just seven and a half billion and hand the xbox out <laughs> so shall we leave it there for today yeah what do you think on? about it i think it's interesting i do kind of see it as a, as a last minute dash to try and have something for the release of the console i don't think it's a last minute dash i think they've been preparing that for a while but it could be a last well, six I mean, month or that's what year I mean. dash when that's they thought I mean. oh god we we won't have an exclusive when we announce the console other than Halo. We need to have something else we yeah. can do. Because I don't believe you can't... Well, one, I don't think it's phys well, not physically, but actually possible to do a deal like that within less than a couple of months. Like, because you need lawyers involved, you need agreements, blah, 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 blah. You might not want it to take too long. They might have had this plan in place and then enacted it in within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because you don't want the word getting out. But that's why. I, I, I don't think it's going to cause people to 
I don't think it's going to cause people, people to switch between if they were originally going to buy a PlayStation 5 to switch to a, C to a Series S or X. But it might be a move that captures a more casual gamer yeah. or convinces people who are more innately Xbox to stay Xbox. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at the if you, if you look at the exclusives for PS5 and you don't like any of them, then going to Xbox getting Game Pass is a better yeah. deal. Yeah, and there will be people like that out there. Yes, and also there will be exclusives at some point, possibly for Xbox. So possibly they're holding out for that as well. I mean, if you're a hardcore Halo fan, you might be holding out for Halo Infinite next year. So therefore, you want to get mm -hmm. an Xbox X. And there will be a Gears Six, if not more. I think there'll be probably be more than just another Gears game on the way. There'll be yeah. more Gears games. Yeah. Which I am actually not unhappy about. After three and four, I was thinking, but I'd heard great things about five, so I suppose that's. Yeah. yeah. I like five. I really like five. Yeah. They need to work on better stories. They really need to, but they're getting there. So I think we're going to end it there, and all I've got to say is thank you guys for listening. What do you guys think of the Halo? Uh, not Halo. <laughs> so used to saying the word Halo. Uh, the Microsoft Bethesda story. What do you guys think of the Amazon Luna story? Uh, if you'd like to leave a comment down below, that'd be brilliant. Or you can email us at overshadow.shadowcast at gmail.com with any stories or thoughts you'd like to have with us. If you want to hit that subscribe button, that'd be fantastic. Hit that like, hit that share button. Hit the notif notification bell for when we upload. That'd be fantastic. You can find us on Facebook at overshadow.shadowcast. And I think that's everything. So if you guys want to come back next week, that'd be brilliant. And like I said, uh, comment, email us, do whatever. And that's all that's really left for me to say is goodbye and thank you for listening, Tommy. Would you like to say goodbye? I would. Say goodbye then, please. Goodbye then, please. Goodbye. Bye-bye.